Hi, hello, and welcome back to DRS with Ash. We've got a very interesting guest today. Uh, in fact, this has been on the pipeline for a while now. I've been telling the audience and the fans that we'll be getting the man himself. We've got the chairman of SG, Sand Spirals Greenlands, uh, Mr. Paras Anand with me. Mr. Paras, welcome on the show. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Ashwin, on the show. How are you well, doing? You know, it's, actually, it's actually been long pending. Uh, a lot of people know about you know the cricketing superstars. Uh, there, a lot of them know about the umpires, the broadcasters, the commentators, so on and so forth. But uh, uh, the man behind the, the men behind the scene are very, very, very less spoken about. And uh, you guys have been a sort of a centerpiece in Indian cricket's uh, Indian cricket's growth over the years. Uh, SG, um, the equipments, the balls, all of them have been literally coexisting with the cricket 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 ecosystem and. Uh, I heard some really lovely stories from Rahul Dravid as well. He's been with SG for a long time. Uh, you guys have been helping me out. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for that, firstly. Uh, how's the journey been? Uh, it started with your dad, right? How's the journey been? See, it started uh, with my grandfather, Mr. Okay. Kedarnath Anand. Yeah. And uh, the company was uh, incorporated in 1931. So we are talking about the time when, uh, you know, it was a united okay. India, you know, just before partition. And uh, after partition, then obviously uh, they shifted to India and restarted. And, uh, you know, the, the business was restarted again by my grandfather. And uh, this journey has been very exciting, you know, because uh, uh, from making uh, sports equipment like we, uh, he used to make earlier footballs, hockey, uh, tennis rackets, badminton rackets, cricket balls. So from being a multi-sport, then, you know, they, uh, the family, while uh, uh, coming from there to India, they moved into cricket specific, you know. So, so the focus became uh, more focused on cricket. And uh, over the period of time, you know, we've been very fortunate to deal with the legends like Mr. Gavaskar, Mr. Azuruddin, then like you just mentioned about Rahul. And, uh, you know, several several legends you know who've been a part of the journey of uh, of the brand and now you know like uh, we have uh, youngsters there Birinda Seva was uh, you know with SG for a very long time uh, plus if you see in the current team you know almost half of them are uh, with SG so it's it's been a tremendous journey and uh, uh, there's been uh, a lot of learning for us uh, working with the international cricketers uh, so the product you know the the reason why we were able to uh, upgrade the product was uh, just because of being associated with the best in the business, you know. So that was uh, uh, probably a very integral part of it. And, uh, you know, like you remember what happened a few years ago, there was issue of the SG test ball. And I, I met you also personally, you know, we had a very... We are going to, we are going to eventually get there to ball man. Uh, See, look, uh, look. What, what what interests me is uh, these lovely stories around how companies are built up over a period of time. You said 1931, you guys moved in. Where exactly did you move in from? Uh, where and everybody bases themselves at Meerut, right? Meerut is probably the hub of uh, cricket equipments being manufactured uh, in probably in the world. India is actually an understatement. You have a lot of other countries who manufacture stuff. In, uh, how does it really work, and where did the journey begin? Uh, so, see. Uh, after partition, you know, uh, my grandfather with his family, he shifted to uh, first shifted to Jalandhar. You know, that is where uh, you know, moving from uh, Pakistan post the partition, uh, they were uh, allotted some uh, you know some uh, sort of a rehab. You know, that you can okay get together uh, in the city and start all over again. And it probably did not work out for them over there, so they moved to Agra. So he was uh, you know in Agra for about. Uh, almost three years, you know, and, and started uh, manufacturing cricket shoes. So that business did not work at all. So then he figured out in, in about 1950, uh, you know, there was this uh, some sort of scheme that the government had to support people who had moved from Pakistan. So uh, then they had to move from Agra to Meerut because obviously the footwear manufacturing did not work out. So it was in 1950 when the family, along with obviously my grandfather who was running the business, they reached Meerut and restarted and it took them about three, four years, you know, to get going because at that time there was no money. So all the money he had saved or the savings that he had when he started again in uh, Agra, so he lo lost all his money in the footwear business. So he had to start all over again. 
look for those uh, you know schemes and uh, incentives that the government was providing and uh, fortunately you know merit worked for us you know merit was a place where some of the other companies also moved in and uh, then in the 50s you know again it was starting all over again because they were doing very well in pakistan the business was really flourishing there was a massive factory uh, and you know uh, my father and his brother they had done a good job you know with the uh, with the business they had in pakistan so starting all over again wasn't difficult because they knew the product they had the technical know how and then uh, obviously the support was also there so from 50s to 60s it was you know just getting back on track and then realizing that you know uh, in the 60s we realized that let's focus more on uh, cricket because there is more potential you know if we do if we do tennis badminton football hockey so it's like you know you know you're not going to specialize in any particular uh, uh, product category so then cricket became uh, a major focus area and then you know the collaboration started happening in the 70s and the 80s and then my uncle you know his elder brother so he he was a leather technology expert you know so he had done a, 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 a course from uk which was uh, primarily uh, about leather technology you know so that was also because at that time there were no synthetic materials it was mostly everything your gloves your pads footballs everything was made of leather that was the only material that was being used and of course cricket ball is still made out of leather so you know his strength uh, uh, or his knowledge of leather and the knowledge of my uncle you know who's uh, the current chairman mr kalash anand his uh, playing the sport and being connected then you know the association uh, with mr gavaskar because in 1979 he got hold of the batting glove and you know he he was he was sponsored by a english company but he saw the glove and he said you know which is the company who is making this glove this is like better than what i am getting from england you know at that time in 70s and 80s everything was being made in england and uh, and uh, mr gavaskar was like i i need this product you know i need to get hold even though i am sponsored by whosoever but i need to save my finger so i need this batting glove so that is how you know we got a message from his friend and we got in touch and that was the starting point you know where very you know he just fell in love with the glove and then you know we made bats for him and he was like okay i don't care whatever money i'm getting from you know the bigger companies or bigger brands but i will stick with ashi because uh, you know i believe in the product and then one thing led to another thing you know his fascination for the glove then obviously working with him for his product bats and you know and how how it all worked out was you know one legend would probably recommend one legend would recommend you know the next in line you know so he was the one who said you know azhar he's very promising you know azruddin i've seen this kid play and you know the kind of shots he hit so you know we got connected with mr azhar and then you know rahul dravid story is he saw azhar bhai's bat and they were like 27 so you know it's like 1100 grams and good profile they used to hit well so he was also like you know i i want the bat that azhar is using so although he here was using another brand as a ranji trophy player playing for karnataka he was sponsored by bdf but then you know he approached uh, azhar bhai and he said you know can uh, sg provide me bats so you know one legend to another and then the story has been continuing you know like even today if uh, rahul kayal kayal rahul has been with us for uh, you know since he was 12 13 years old and he was recommended by rahul dravid you know so so you know some so this association has really helped you know uh, the brand and uh, you know we look i mean with, with respect to that sunny gold and sunny tony will always be very very special to most cricketers or even cricket avid cricket balls from uh, you know the 80s and the 90s <clears throat> but uh, this is a bit of a chicken and egg situation right i produce so many so many things today in fact uh, you guys have recently launched your uh, standalone store in, at ferosho kotla if i'm not and uh, these standalone stores have everything ranging from footwear to you know uh, t-shirts to tracks to whites to everything you name it with respect to cricket you've got it but what exactly did you launch first you said footwear was the first attempt but what was the first yeah. successful launch of uh, sg with, with respect to cricket uh with respect to cricket i think uh, it was a cricket ball you know so the yeah so so uh, the story you know the uh, the story started with the cricket ball because that was one product which uh, uh, just like the batting glove you know like uh, mr uh, mr gavaskar falling for the bat- batting glove and you know feeling that you know he needs to use the product and get associated with the brand 
So the cricket ball was uh, uh, a product which uh, we were making uh, uh, before partition as well, and after partition. So the cricket ball stayed, you know, and that is how the connect with the sport continued, you know, because we're making football, we're making uh, uh, you know rackets, but cricket ball was one thing which you know from day one till date has been uh, like a sort of a backbone, you know, where uh, even in India. Uh, since '93, you know the uh, the test ball has been used in uh, test matches and the first class games. So that was probably the breakthrough product, you know, for 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 the brand. And now, obviously, like you mentioned, you know, we've gotten into uh, lifestyle, uh, sportswear. There is footwear. There is luggage category. So you know, it it probably just boils down to that one product, which led us to cricket bats, which led us to you know the entire range, and. Uh, uh, you know, now now we're also uh, uh, gotten into a product like bowling machine. You know, so we are manufacturing a, a Indian-made bowling machine, which is as good as any machine that you would get in the world. So you know, so but you know, again, to answer your question, it was the cricket ball, you know, which was the like the flagship product for the company. Like when we talk about cricket ball, uh, supply and demand is a massive issue, right? And, uh, with respect to SG, like early on, only Test cricket and Ranji Trophy cricket was played with SG balls. Uh, obviously, the, the the it is it is a premium product. It's not everybody could afford it. Uh, but now today, uh, if you you have a club game in Chennai, you have a club game in Delhi, and in there, uh, an SG ball is being used. And obviously, uh, the supply demand and even the affordability of people playing the sport has has increased. Uh, but we, the constant thing that we hear about SG, the fact that one is a machine made ball. And the other ones are handcrafted or a handmade ball. How take us through a little bit about how exactly you source this leather from what goes into the process of making a ball, the difference between machine made and handmade balls. So uh, you know, like you said, that uh, uh, major difference has been uh, that the SG ball is handmade. Uh, so and that is something which was uh, uh, relevant for our cricket white ball. So the red ball and the white ball both were handmade for us. You know, so whether it was, uh, you know, stitching the, you know, the the pieces together or just holding the two cups together. So it's like you know, a ball is made of four quarters. So there is then uh, you have two cups made out out of those four quarters and you stitch them together. So. Uh, earlier, what we were doing, you know, we were making both the red and the and the white ball in a similar way, that is hand stitch. Everything was hand stitched. But now, what we've done is, we've understood that you know the demand, uh, whether it is at the uh, at the club level, whether it, even if it is at is at the first class level or uh, Ranji level or international level, uh, we figured out that you know you cannot have uh, a similar ball for both the uh, for both the categories. You know, so. So we've tried to do something new. You know, we have tried to probably work around uh, differently for the red ball. So the red ball is still uh, predominantly handmade uh, because uh, what it gives you is the pronounced seam. You know? As you're talking about the ball, can you just take us through how exactly you get into it, like four cups and all that? A little bit more uh, detailing into that, if it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so if we if we if we talk about uh, the, uh, the the red ball, you know, uh, like I said, you know, it's made out of uh, four quarters, and then you know, we, you make two cups. So there is one half and the other half. So you first you stitch the two quarter pieces together, then you uh, then you obviously have a molded core. Now that we use a molded core, earlier we used to use a handmade uh, pork and woolen core. You know, so now that uh, the, uh, you know the feedback that we've got that you know the harder ball was liked by uh, by players by you know the fast bowlers and you know the discussion I had with you. So we moved to a solid core, and uh, so what you do is you use that solid pork core and you stitch them together. So all this all the stitching that happens is is hand stitched. You know, and uh, if you see these guys, they're really highly skilled. You know, they're the best in the business, and uh, uh, the the consistency they get on each and every ball is unbelievable you, know, you cannot tell when you look at the product you, it's difficult to tell between a hand stitch and a machine stitch that's how good these guys are who are stitching the top level balls and uh, you know after uh, obviously this uh, after stitching uh, the ball together then they stitch the seam 
so in the red ball when they are stitching by hand what what they actually do is they go through from uh, one end of like from one half of the cup and they bring the thread out from the other so it actually stitches right through under the under the half that they are stitching you know the center piece so right. that and uh, that stitch gives you the outer seam so that is how they give you the outer seam by stitching through and through but when you uh, make a ball when then the seam is machine made which is what you see in the cricket white ball that seam is just you take that cup which is made out of you know the two quarters which is the cup which is the half of the ball and you just run it under the seam without the other part you know so it's just a cosmetic stitch it doesn't go through and through and that okay. creates yeah and that creates a difference between a a five day game or a one day game so what happens is if the seam is uh, less pronounced like the one that you get from a machine stitch is when the issues happen you know that the seam is not good enough to grip after a certain number of overs so you know we figured that out very recently we said okay let's not mix the two you know let's keep red as traditional as possible because it has to play for 90 overs 80 overs 100 overs and let's try to uh, ensure that the seam is pronounced as long as possible and the white ball you know which we understand it's only used maximum for 25 overs you know even if you are using in one day international you have two balls so that's about it so don't worry about the seam there will be as consistent and you know this debate will go on in <laughs> limited over is a batsman game you know so it, the white ball that we produced had a pronounced seam and it, it was used in uh, forgetting i think in 2017 it was yeah, used it was yeah, yeah yeah and the bowlers were happy and the batsmen were not happy so the feedback although bcci you know tried very hard to convince the batters of that era no there's no difference but so, they managed look, to change it's, it's, it's very it's very simple happiness is the mantra for life and every cricket team have more batters than bowlers so the happiness of the batsman is very very important as it stands you you spoken about ball and bat uh, uh, stressing a little bit more and emphasizing a little bit more on the ball because of clearly who i am uh, we'll get to the bat but before that one final question with respect to the making of the ball uh, you spoke about stitching and a lot of people are very very skilled uh, you know people going through the ball with uh, stitching, stitching the ball together H- how many people would you exactly have uh, have in your uh, factory Uh, how 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 what are the what are the like different factory specifications that you might have how big is your factory okay so uh, you know if we have to uh, uh, you know specify that in cricket ball manufacturing we have about 200 workers you know who are uh, and we are producing uh, just just for uh, the ball just for the ball. <laughs> just for the ball yeah so we have 200 workers just for cricket balls and uh, we are producing almost 1200 balls a day now you know so that's wow. the production uh, level we breached and for cricket bats again we have about 250 workers and and, and we are producing about 1600 bats a day and then uh, we have a lot of workers for batting gloves and batting pads you know so, uh, so for batting gloves and batting pads there are about 600 workers and uh, they are also producing uh, about 1000 batting gloves a day and about 6 700 batting pads a day so it's a massive uh, factory you know so the the production uh, setup we have the bigger one in merit is about uh, almost the covered area is about uh, 385000 square feet you know it's like a like a mall <laughs> wow wow uh, look so what what i'm really hearing from you is you're literally producing four and a half lakh cricket balls a year if i'm hearing that right um you're producing four and a half lakh I, we spoke about it when when we met as well four lakh 50000 cricket balls a year and yet there are a lot of duplicate balls doing the rounds in the market right so does it necessarily mean the demand in the country as playing cricket is constant is so huge that these 4 and a half lakh balls are needed and beyond is that what it is can you increase your production by any chance we 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 can and we have been doing you know you're absolutely right we have been doing and the reason why you know you see so many uh, duplicate balls in the market is the fact that the demand is so much more and we we not been able to cope up with the with the supply and that's been the focus you know that was the reason why we wanted to get into machine made you know because that will fast forward the process you know where you can make your uh, white ball uh, on a machine 
and 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 the red ball continues to be the traditional ball which is for the five day game and without changing any property or without changing you know the the way it will have an impact on the sport so you continue producing the red and the white would be where the numbers will churn out you know and and white ball demand is has increased in the last five years like how you know you also know how how much cricket is now happening at the grassroots level everybody wants to play colored clothing and 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 the white ball so so there you have it today just to why the reason why i got about the, the, the debate on ball was the fact that we were playing a club game in chennai and uh, we, were, we we tend to use the sg balls again for our club cricket and uh, the first innings we, i was i was bowling in the first innings the wicket was really slow the ball was like out of shape and you know the seam wasn't quite hard just kept bowling through the first innings 70 80 overs the ball was done first innings the wickets weren't falling like 200 for 3 or something like that but very slow and drabby cricket and i figured out at the end of the game but that there was how many ever revolutions you put on the ball it was not really you know getting that bounce or the you know speed of the track so i went back home i had i had a box of balls that sg had given me for practice you know i i picked up the ball obviously is it has the board logo and the rest of the sg balls do not have a board logo so i i took i took my box of balls and i went to the umpire and said can we use this he said of course you can use it because these are sg balls as well uh, so we uh, the balls were obviously clearly darker than the other ones that we were using we gave the ball uh, the second new ball was taken that morning the team was all out in eight overs uh, not not about, not about the spin or anything but just the sheer yeah. quality of the seam and the ball the ball started yeah. to just twist through bounce a little bit more you know and take the edge or whatever it is the it's it's just a you know even the speed difference by you know 0.2 seconds or you know whatever it is it makes a massive difference and the batsman will have to measure up to it and that's why that's part of the conversation we had when we met uh, when we spoke yes. about quality of sg balls uh, it's yeah. wonderful to hear the journey and obviously the difficulties and the amount of people that put the work uh, work behind the door uh, now just just moving on to the uh, the story of bats i heard a very interesting story you can just take it forward uh, rahul bhai just joined as the coach of the indian team and he spoke about how he wanted to pick the best bats that he can from sg and he traveled all the way to uk which is exactly where you get your wood from uh, and he said uh, some of those willows that he picked up and brought were the poorest of willows that he had ever used uh, it's a very interesting story can you tell us where uh, where and how this wood is uh, you know uh, imported and where your factory is in uk and where your you know plantations are whatever it is yeah, yeah. so uh, this is a very interesting story you know and i'll tell you what happened exactly so so it was uh, i think it was uh, one of the england trips where he was you know uh, for some uh, some tournament and he said uh, uh, paras i want to go to the uh, actually go to the factory where you source your wood from and uh, so there are two uh, major suppliers uh, that we use in england so one is uh, js rights and the other company is foskett willow so he he went to js rights and uh, you know spent half a day with them and js rights have been uh, supplying willow for bats for literally since uh, 100 years right now more than 100 years yeah yeah more than 100 years yeah so uh, so you know they were also very excited to have him there and and uh, you know they had lunch together and then picked up you know rahul picked up about uh, three four clefts and, and he and they were nice grains big profile clefts big size so and, and very excited you know he was very excited and called me from there you know i'm i'm, I'm going to arrange to send you some clefts please make my bats and make sure that you know uh, i scored a lot of runs with these bats so came back the cleft came so i when i when i saw the bats whatever i did with it i'll tell you in the end of the story but uh, i sent him four bats and he was very happy he played he played really well scored runs uh, uh, Got those three four hundreds in the England series and uh, very excited. Hey, see, you know it worked. He said, "Pass it worked." You know that these bats that I had, uh, got from England. I didn't tell him anything. I said, "Yeah, yeah, Rahul, it worked, man. Brilliant, brilliant." He said, "I don't know if I can do it again or not." And story ends there. You know, this is what he knew. Then when he retired, <laughs> then I told him the story. I said, "They were those bats. I could not have made a junior bat out of it. It was so heavy, and I just picked out." some random cleft made sure that it was you know probably slightly different so that you would also feel yeah, yeah these are better and, and, and you know you're just mentally so happy that i chose this cleft and he and he scored also so and then he figured out man you know that last time i'm going to do that 
that's very interesting see how is it does it work because obviously as a batsman when you look at it you look at the grains you look at the number of grains then you look at the pick up of the bat the balance etc etc how exactly does it work for a manufacturer and what do you look at and for example you guys make bats and send me you guys make bats and send to rishab uh, you guys also sell it in the you know store yes. Yes. so how how exactly do they differ uh, see what happens is uh, when we select the below you know that is the stage where uh, we get an idea because you know all the, uh, we first of all weigh the cleft you know that's very important you know what is the weight of the cleft it could look like the best below with lots of grains straight grains but if it's heavy then obviously you can't make a a bat for a professional cricketer you know forget about making it for an international cricketer you can't even make a bat for a for a club cricketer because it's just too heavy anything over 1200 grams so 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 what we do is we you know when we get the cleft the first thing we have to do is make sure that the weight is right you know and once you get the weight right then it gets down to the dimensions you know how 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 big the cleft is what is the size of the edge what is the size of the spine and then based on that you know you assign that okay this is a, a a lighter cleft or a medium cleft or a heavy cleft so the heavy ones are the ones where you have to work harder you know so for a for a bat maker for a bat maker to make a bat out of it he has to spend more time he has to you know probably he has to uh, uh, figure out where does he reduce the weight so it becomes more complicated for him but the lighter ones are the ones where you know you can play around you know you can probably uh, uh, use for the for the professional cricketers but then it's not just about the weight you know first it's the weight then it is obviously the shape the profile and then you get down to you know once you made the bat it's the the sound of the bat you know that how 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 is it sounding you know and if if it's not the right sound so you could have started the process you know spent a couple of days in in the process and in the end when you're ready to dispatch the bat and you you know check the the, the rebound or you check the ping in the bat if it's not there you have to start all over again you know so 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 it's a it's it's, it's a massive challenge but then you know uh, we figured that out you know in the last few years we figured out you know what is uh, the requirement at the international level what is needed by first class cricketers what is needed by uh, you know maybe club players also or or junior cricketers you know because the junior market is also uh, growing in india yeah. yeah a lot of kids now you know the parents also want the kids to play with with the english willow you know so so the, the the demand is growing so you know these are the uh, major factors that are uh, uh, considered you know uh, for grading the bats you know what goes for an athlete what goes for the uh, you know maybe a first class cricketer or the market look the surprising thing about the whole uh, bat making scenario is you have so many wood options right you've got ply plywood teak wood whatever you can say anything but there is just put this particular willow that matches up against this particular leather it has to be an amazing combination right how how did it get figured out and what sort of a wood is this is this only one set of wood that goes and you know can play with a cricket ball the rest of it actually breaks if you make a bat out of any of the other wood it breaks right yes yes so uh, you know uh, the the best two uh, options that we have you know of willow uh, our english willow and and the cashmere you know even, even the cashmere willow because uh, it's not as consistent you know it's it's slightly heavy and it's not as consistent in weight you know so you would uh, you know you could get a very light cashmere willow but then majority of them would be heavier than english willow but it's not you know the performance is not bad even in a cashmere bat the performance is not bad sometimes you can even get a bat which will be comparable to a english willow but yeah, right. with english willow what happens is it's the consistency you know of weight profile and and performance also So, so you know, like people have experimented with European willow. There is, uh, there, you know, we, we even saw some Canadian willow coming from uh, Canada. Then there was uh, talk about Australian willow. So there, there are more uh, options available. But like you said, you know, these are the two which are there. The supply chain is there. People are farming over there. It's 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 a business which has been going on for uh, hundreds of years. So, uh, but I won't be surprised, you know, if uh, there. would be uh, wood available you know which would be uh, relevant for uh, for cricket uh, bat making i asked the same uh, question yeah. you know what his answer was uh -huh. he said for hundreds of years test cricket hasn't changed and hundreds of years the willows have also not changed it remained the same and i don't see any alternative options coming in the future it was a 
hilarious story and it will be amazing if you can just share some uh, footages of the cliffs and you know yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll whatever it is for just for the yeah. audience sake uh, yeah. Yeah. one final question before i let you go paras what lies ahead for sg what are your what are your future plans can you talk us a little bit through about that and uh, with regards to our plan the plan for sg is you know we obviously we are the uh, largest manufacturers of cricket equipment in the world and uh, now the you know the next step for us is to get into retail you know to get into the space where <laughs> sorry to get into the space where uh, you know you you come as a brand you know you you're not just one of the cricketing brands so like you know there's this leaning story in china yeah so so they're in badminton they're in basketball and and now you know if you go to china after nike and adidas the third biggest brand in sports is leaning you know so 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 that's our vision you know where we want to have uh, a, a a more uh, uh, penetration in the market we want to have uh, more display like we getting into retail you know the whole thought process is how do we tell the brand story you know if there is a sports store where you're one of the several brands it's just the product which is you know shouting out so the whole idea of getting into retail is you know uh, you person walks into the store there is this history wall so you know all that we've discussed now uh, would be reflected in those stores and uh, you know you walk in there like we we are obviously uh, very supportive of our distribution network you know the dealers who've been with us for such a long period of time so you know we and they were a bit jittery you know they were like you know why are you getting into retail you know what will happen with our business and rightly so yeah yes yeah. so, so we told them we, you know it was, it was not easy convincing them or telling them you know see that's a different story that's that's uh, you know maybe a marketing uh, 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 strategy for us and we will not compete with you you know so if you if you go to a dealer in in chennai in your market you know he'll easily give you a 15% discount or you know whatever discount is there in the market bombay you get more discount delhi is because it's closer to merit so you know the discounts are uh, are more over here but you know if you go to a store stand alone store the products are not discounted like they are discounted at the dealer so you know the dealers have also understood it's not about they're not competing with us they're actually facilitating you know if if the brand brand becomes popular the demand will go up and if yeah. the demand goes up it works for us as well so so we've been able to uh, convince the you know the most of the dealers not all of them but you know some of them are still complaining so that is the strategy you know for the brand that uh, we will uh, we want to take it to the next level we want to have uh, retail presence we want to have stores like you know, like a nike has or like a adidas has and uh, and and what we been able to do in in a short period say in the last uh, uh, couple of years like in just last one year the first store was opened last year it's looking very promising you know the the feedback we are getting the uh, Uh, you know the the traction we are getting on the uh, sportswear side of business is is very encouraging you know so that's the plan you know just going ahead growing that space and uh, continue trying to deliver the best product you know <laughs> that I, heard about, uh, i heard about the store and obviously it looked amazing i saw some uh, videos of it uh, i look forward to seeing more and more such stores being opened and uh, look forward to walking into one of them if not probably uh, managing to run a retail store of yours someday <laughs> um, but uh, keeping keeping all that aside for us i would like to uh, thank you for not only being on the show uh, but also thank you for being a part of an ecosystem which is very very quintessential for the sport and uh, you guys have been a pioneer in the sport in terms of cricket equipments and uh, it's 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 like coexisting in this ecosystem and without you guys the ecosystem would have been uh, poorer i must say and uh, it's been it's been a lot of knowledge that you shared today hopefully i've not given away a lot of trade secrets but uh, it it's it's very enriching to know thank you so much for joining me on the show paras thank you ashwin thank you so much and i just want to uh, you know compliment back you know the support and uh, you know the feedback that we've been getting from uh, uh, legends like yourselves is the reason why sg is what it is today thank you very much thank you thank you so much paras. thank you all the best all the best thank you.